So, um, for those of you who have not read the bio of Dr. Mohammed Al Gindi, he's actually coming to us live right now. He's based in Cairo. He's actually based all over. Um, he is the guru uh, on cyber security, cyber terrorism, and works for. He does a lot of work for uh, the United Nations. In fact, he trains the law enforcement all over the place. Uh, he's very, very familiar with this topic, and he's going to walk you through. Uh, so I don't want to take a minute of your time. And, <laughs> and your your bio and everything is on the uh, thing. He's yeah, also yeah, yeah. part of our advisory board. So go for it. It's, thank you very much for doing this. I appreciate it. I know it's late at night for you. So my no, no, no problem. It's, it's my pleasure. Thank you very much again for uh, the invitation and for, uh, you know, allowing me to be part of this uh, very important uh, uh, event uh, online. And thanks for all the panelists. Uh, I really learned a lot all, all over the day because I was uh, with you when you, uh, you know, when you put the link online and I shared everything. So people are really happy with what uh, they are learning from all the experts you invited to uh, uh, the, the summit. So thank you again. And um, I, I hope that uh, this presentation will be uh, will, will add something to what we are facing now in terms of uh, people are more reliant on technology and uh, uh, especially with the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and people are more dependent on uh, devices uh, connected to the internet and also our critical infrastructure and all those things. So the, the, um, the title of the presentation is cyber terrorism today and tomorrow. So, you know, Terrorism is not a new thing, but um, I, I will just skip my bio. But let me ask a question here. So are we living in the Matrix? I think all of you uh, watched the movie uh, Matrix, uh, and uh, I, I think it was fascinating, and mo most of the people maybe didn't understand what, what this movie is talking about in terms of the philosophy of the cyberspace. So let's see. Uh, Just a simple clip to remind you. Have you ever had a dream, Leo, that you were so sure was real? What if you were unable to wake from that dream? How would you know the difference between the dream world and the real world? What is the Matrix? It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. I would just skip this. This was a very uh, short clip that uh, I have edited uh, uh, from the Matrix. And uh, you, as you can see, we are now, I think, living in something like this because people are maybe is now slave to, to, to the technology world. And this all kind of hallucination that we are living in cyberspace. And this is also um, mentioned in the cyberspace um, uh, novel by William Gibson in 1984, a new romancer. Uh, he, 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 he was the first one mentioned the word cyberspace. And uh, as you can see, this is the, the definition of the cyberspace in William Gibson's uh, novel. And the, it was talking about the conven conversions between the physical and the digital world. And, and now I think we, we are you know, witnessing these things now in today's world. So the, the word cyber is, is not new. So um, it, it you know, dated back to the, the father of cybernetics when he introduced uh, in 1948 uh, the cybernetics uh, book about the control and the communication and the animal and the machine. It's, it is a scientific study of control and the communication between uh, you know, um, animal, a human, and the machine. And it, it is derived from the Greek work uh, cybernetics or the steering man or the governor. So this is the, the word cyber. And from then, Cyber is now connected to everything, not only the, the cyborg world and the communication world, and also the, the, this area of the, of the communication between uh, uh, animal and uh, uh, the machine, as Norbert Wiener has said. So now we are, we are dealing with, with the word cyberspace every, everywhere. So uh, we need to understand 
how this cyberspace is constructed because everything now is connected to this uh, to this word the cyber so simply speaking we can say that uh, cyberspace is just uh, layers it started from uh, down to top with the infrastructure the physical network infrastructure and the internet all those things is the physical uh, layer of the cyberspace so we going up to the logical layer software services and embedded software all those things and this we are going to um, the data layer which is the data and the information and the last one because of the explosion of social media and all those things so we are now dealing with the social layer or persona component in the, in the cyberspace and this is you know uh, brought to us the psychological and the you know uh, uh, social effect of the cyberspace so this is also uh, you know uh, it comes with dangerous things like the transnational group global crimes which is now happening everywhere in the world so someone in in a country can attack other people in another countries and this is a very dangerous thing in especially in the legal uh, perspective so you can see now in cyberspace conventional crimes are committed in cyberspace cyber criminals cyber through cyber crimes terrorism uh, organized crime and there is a quote from the national research council 1991 you see the date the modern theft can steal more with a computer than with a gun tomorrow's terrorists may be able to do more damage with a keyboard than with a bomb i think this is something we are witnessing every day now so i think now with the fourth and the serial revolution and all those things we have been always talking about in the world economic forum and uh, uh, you know um, talk about the the, the fourth and the serial revolution the blurring between the physical and digital world and also the, the you know the uh, medical devices internet of things and all those things i think we will be facing a lot more dangerous world than we are uh, uh, dealt with before so people think that technology is uh, you know making us more resilient and uh, you know bringing us to flexibility and and do more things with with, with you know with better methods yes i agree with this but this also might be making us more vulnerable to cyber attacks which is the thing we are talking about now because it, you know is is technology is always good i don't think so so from my point of view, so what about if this cyber attack endangers people's lives? What will be the case? So in this case comes the dilemma because people will start to ask, is this a cyber crime, a cyber war, or cyber terrorism? So there is a dilemma of definitions here when we are, we are talking about cyber attack that can endanger uh, people's life. So with the rise of cyber terrorists and all those things that we are, you know, hearing every day in the media, the, there is a cyber terrorist everywhere. So, so now, do we need to understand what the meaning of cyber terrorism and cyber terrorist and all those things. Terrorism is not a new thing. It's an old, old tactic, exploiting the psychological effect to spread fear among the public. And this is, was way old um, from the, the, you know, the history of the, Zealots and the Sicarii since the first century AD were in struggling with uh, the Roman Empire and uh, you know and these things. So uh, I think it's not new, but it's you know they are using new tactics, new technologies, new uh, methods to uh, you know spread the fear. One of the um, oldest example of terrorism is the assassins in the 11th century, um, the people of Hassan Sabah. I think maybe some people um, heard about this i think if you have uh, watched the movie assassin's creed is based on the you know the, the the mythology of the you know the assassins and uh, it was a, a motto that they'll be using with assassins we will kill you whenever and wherever you are because this is about fear spreading fear among the public this is a long story really i don't want to go through all those historical things so the conversation about cyber terrorism as a term started in late 1990s in the past century with the bombing of the World Trade Center in 1993. And also when the United States uh, Department of Defense started to conduct the first information war ex uh, warfare exercises. And uh, it, it started to, to be concerned of the, the, the attacks of the critical infrastructure. So uh, is this is a cyber terrorism? 
attacking something like critical infrastructure. This is something that we need to discuss in more details because we need to define the term. The term cyber terrorism coined by Professor Perry Cullen uh, it is a, a research fellow at the Institute of Security and Intelligence in California. And uh, the, the definition lacks um, really clear and widely accepted uh, uh, you know, uh, definition around the world. But um, people say, most experts say that cyber terrorism deals with cyberspace and its technologies as weapons or targets with politically motivated violence against non-combatant targets. And this is maybe the, 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 the most important element in, in cyber terrorism. There is also some uh, definitions, um, maybe, you know, uh, some people will accept this definition, others will not. Uh, the definition of uh, Dorothy uh, Tinning, the prominent uh, cybersecurity expert in the uh, national security in the United States, um, she defined, uh, you know, uh, cyber terrorism as uh, unlawful attacks and threats of attacks against computers, networks, and information stored therein. Uh, when done to intimate or coerce government or its people to further of politically or social objectives. Further, to qualify the cyber terrorism an attack should result in violence against persons or property or at least cause enough harm to generate fear. This is, I think this is the, the, the main idea when we were talking about the old history of terrorism. So attacks should lead to maybe death, injury, explosion, or severe economic loss, something like this. Serious attacks against critical infrastructure could be considered cyber terrorism. Political, religiously, and ideological motivation should be also, uh, you know, a part of this um, uh, action. But uh, as you can see, it's clear, but it's not widely acceptable all over the world. Uh, because there is no internationally accepted definition of terrorism per se, and also there is no internationally accepted definition of cyber terrorism. Uh, uh, when you consider one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter, and this is a big dilemma. So, especially on the policy and uh, you know, in, 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 in the legal perspective. So, uh, terrorists have started to use technology and ICT since uh, you know, 90s of the past century with Osama bin Laden starting to use communications and satellite phones. And all, the, all those things, it's, it's, it's known. Um, maybe, um, you know, terrorist organizations like Hamas and uh, other uh, organizations in the Middle East started to use these technologies also at the same time. And what this was a very, very, you know, a, a, a very uh, big leap for terrorists to use technology at this time. And the, all of them, you know, had uh, many websites online at, the, at, this, day, at this time. Uh, uh, for example, one of the first uh, terrorist organizations that, uh, you know, had website online was uh, Egyptian uh, terrorist organization called uh, Al Gamal Al Islamiyah. Uh, it's um, an Islamic group uh, in 1996. So it was it was old, one of the oldest on the internet. So we started to see the rise of technical terrorists because terrorism, uh, you know, is not all also about, you know, spreading propaganda and all those things. Yes, there's a lot of things also like you attacking, uh, you know, um, websites and uh, vulnerable system and all those things. It started with uh, the fall of Taliban in 2000 when the United States enters Afghanistan. You know, um, Hamid Mir, this, this guy beside Osama bin Laden was responsible for writing biography of Osama bin Laden. He said that, uh, you know, when the Taliban fall down, he said that I see every second Al-Qaeda member carrying a laptop computer along with a clashing cop going to, you know, to hide. So this is the start of the, uh, you know, the technological revolution in, uh, if we can say, in, in terrorism, uh, in cyberspace. And also comes the, the man who founded uh, the, the, you know, the, the empire of, of media, of the jihadi media, online, uh, Adam Ghadan, he founded a Sahab Media Foundation in 2001 with the attack of the USS uh, 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 coal um, uh, carrier ship in, the, in, in Yemen in 2001. He was the uh, first one to cover this incident online. And uh, Osama bin Laden once said to the, the Qaeda leader, uh, Mullah Omar, said that, it's obvious that the media war in this century is one of the strongest methods. In fact, its ratio may reach 90% of the total preparation for the battles. I think we, are, we, we all see, see these things going on online 
especially with the rise of ISIS uh, and uh, you know the Islamic State, uh, the so-called Islamic State online. And uh, this also, um, you know, uh, has a long history with radicalization using ICT, and also it's a strategic, by the way. This guy, um, Abu Musab Suri, is one of the most prominent uh, uh, terrorists online when, when he wrote his uh, uh, prominent and uh, very important book in 2004, and it's available online, by the way, all terrorists are using this. It's uh, called, you know, the Global Islamic, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, call. It's a call for, for people to fight, you know, the jihad around the world uh, against the uh, infidels. So this, this book is about 1,600 pages in, in using the tactical decentralization, readerless, open source, cyber and media, all those things in, you know, in the cause of uh, uh, jihad if we can say like they are say, you know calling themselves and i'm not agree with this uh, term anyway so uh, then we we came to the bin laden of the internet anwar laulaki he also has you know a long legacy of the things that people are using online to commit terrorist acts easily online with uh, the inspire magazine uh, you know cyber propaganda and also financing terrorism using uh, you know, technological uh, methods. One of the most important thing is a manual published by the Anwar Al-Awlaki and the Samir Khan in the Inspire magazine, a chapter called Open Source Jihad. And this is very, very important and used against many countries around the world, uh, even in the Middle East. The Open Source Jihad was, you know, concentrating on creating something that you can uh, use in your jihad uh, um, at home, something like you make a bomb in the kitchen of your mom, for example. So this is one of, of the things that's used in, uh, you know, Boston Marathon, for example. So, so it's, it's very important to understand that these things are now, you know, facilitated by, by technology. And with the rise of ISIS uh, and the so-called Islamic State, in, uh, so in 2014, you, you, I think you, you, you remember the rise of the social network use of the ISIS, and I don't really have time to go through all those things, but uh, the United Nations Office on Drugs and the Crime classifies uh, cyber terrorists' uh, use of social media uh, as, as a cyber terrorism and cyber enabled terrorism in, in different actions, as you can see, um, propaganda and psychological operation, fundraising, recruitment and radicalization, information gathering, communications, command and control, training, guidance, cyber attacks, all those things. So it's, it's all, you know, uh, used by terrorists all over the the, the cyberspace and uh, the problem with this classification is uh, some kind of acts as you can see can can be itself a set of cyber crime maybe it's not, not cyber terrorism but in, in some jurisdiction it, it could be a cyber crime so um, can we say that all those things that we discussed is cyber terrorism it depends because there is a difference between terrorist use of the internet in their support activities like propaganda, psychological warfare, and all those things, and uh, using ICT as a weapon or target with politically motivated violence. So is there is any examples? Yes, there is a lot of examples that we can talk about, but there is no time because I don't want to take much time on this. But you can see uh, the act of cyber terrorism could include kinetic cyber attacks, the, the effect of kinetic cyber attacks can go, you know, and the spread behind or uh, outside the cyber domain. Something like attacking, you know, critical infrastructure of the power stations, transportation systems, especially aviation, um, medical devices and internet things that connected to the people's lives. All those things can be very dangerous and can cause, uh, you know, death, injuries, and all those things that be, uh, you know, categorized as a, a, a cyber terrorism act. So at the legal perspective, uh, there is two um, very important instruments that we can use when we, we are dealing at the international level from the, the legal perspective uh, about terrorism and cyber terrorism, especially cyber terrorism is using technology uh, in, in, as, a, as, a, as a facilitation or a mean. The 2010 Beijing Convention is the first international convention and the protocol uh, to deal with cyber terrorism because it mentioned in the protocol especially on aviation security, which is 
uh, you know, related directly to the act of terrorism is using any technological means to commit an act of terrorism. And this is, was the first time to mention something like this in international convention in terms of cyber terrorism. Also, the United Nations Security Council Resolution uh, 2341, uh, published in 2017, um, there is a, a specifically um, a very important uh, you know, article mentioned uh, to call upon states to establish or strengthen the national, regional, and international partnership with the stakeholders, both public and the private, as appropriate to share information and experience in order to prevent, protect, mitigate, investigate, respond to and recover from damage from terrorist attacks on critical infrastructure facilities, including through joint training and use of establishment of a relevant communication or emergency warning networks. These are the most important you know, international experiments that we can use. My point to conclude is uh, now businesses are facing you know, a lot of you know, threats online because we are uh, connecting too much things online without putting security in mind. My recommendation is that we need awareness and the training and the education programs in these things because not all organizations and uh, you know, staff of the organization are aware of those threats and how they are conducting and how they are working and how can you know, they, they, they cause harm to the businesses and all those things. The second important thing is the analytical mindset and the critical thinking mind. We need, we need people who have critical thinking. You know, analytical mindset is, is not easy to be found, really. Uh, and uh, I really, when I, w I was working with the United Nations, especially uh, training law enforcement, all law enforcement are looking, you know, uh, to buy tools. We need technology. We need things to, to solve the problem. They don't, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, realize that they need, uh, at the first place, they need the analytical mindset to to use these tools. So we have to deal with the technology as part of the solution, not the, the, you know, the the full solution of, you know, the it's not a silver bullet. It it may cause a lot of harm, by the way. Um, we need to promote private and public partnership in in deterring these cyber threats and also developing national strategies to protect critical infrastructure because we are, we are going to see a lot of things like this in, in the future. And uh, to conclude about the cyber uh, things, especially in, in the Middle East, I have published uh, my own book about the, the, the terrorism dilemma in the Middle East from the Caliphate to terrorism in cyberspace. Unfortunately, it's only in Arabic now, but you can find it online if you can read Arabic. So I will close with uh, my quote that cyber terrorism could disrupt our lives in the near future tomorrow if we continue to connect the insecure thing to cyberspace. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, the floor is yours, my friend. So quick question for you. We still have yeah. five minutes left for you. So uh, sure. in terms of you identified some of the risks to obviously the businesses, what do you see as the biggest threat or like we talked about ransomware the other day, right? With what's happening. Yeah. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about that? about how this plays into that? Yeah, yeah, sure. It's connected, by the way. So I, I was about to think of the ransomware uh, attacks if it affects people's life, for example. So I think if uh, you heard before about uh, people used uh, ransomware to lock uh, uh, hotels' doors and hotel systems to you know, uh, ask for ransom in Bitcoin and all those things. So if, if this ransomware affecting people's lives, I think it could be uh, easily considered uh, cyber terrorism uh, if it's co connected to maybe a non, uh, you know, status uh, actors or people with a motivational uh, based on a political or religious motivation. Maybe consider the cyber terrorism. And I think this this is something that organizations and uh, uh, you know uh, government in the first place need to uh, you know to address this in their own policy and the strategies. How to deal with these threats at the national the, the national security level, because this can cause more harm to people in the near future, and we will face a lot of things like this. So, so the other part, which is a big risk also, and we've talked about it briefly, is that in the last 12 months, I mean, you got the report, we won't go into that detail, but we've seen almost 60, 70 percent of the cybersecurity professionals cross over to the wrong side. Yeah. Right? And that's a pretty scary thing, what we are reading. Uh, you want to comment on that? Yeah, you know, the problem is, 
people uh, people think that cybersecurity is about uh, you know implementing technology in the infrastructure just uh, you know bring this device bring this tool and uh, you know the, the the infrastructure will be secure and they don't think about the the people's skill skills we need to you know to address people's skills in the first place it's not about you know uh, being a cybersecurity professional being uh, able to use this tool or that tool it's not about this it's it's about your own mindset. That's why I, I insist on the analytical mindset in the first place. Even before you, 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 you will be a cybersecurity professional, you need to work on, the, on, the, on your mindset to, to enhance your analytical mindset in the first place, then go to work with the technology because you know, threats are, are going from, you know, from everywhere. It's not, also, it's not, not only you know, um, related to the tool you are using and uh, the software you are using. It's, maybe it's related to the human element uh, you know uh, at large when and you see the you saw the twitter attack and all those things it's it's all related to the social engineering thing it's, it's related to the mindset not related to technology it's easily you know it's easily it's 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 a very easy attack to attack people you know uh, in in and you know in uh, uh, instead of attacking systems so why you invest them you know more money and more resources to attack very complex system and you can easily attack human mindset. So I think human mindset is a very important thing to address. Which is, uh, that's very interesting because that goes to what we were talking about just because you got pieces of paper. If you don't have yeah, yeah. critical, you were explaining the other day with PhDs and whatever. Unless, yeah, yeah. right? Unless you have a critical thinking mindset, uh, what you just talked about, we, we're going to have potential problems, right? So. Yes. So that uh, is the other area that needs to be addressed. I think this is very good. Um, we're going to do, obviously, because of the fact that we put you in a time when schedule uh, was kind of done. But nevertheless, I think what we'll do is a much longer thing. We did one few days ago a webinar which on our website with you. But I think we'll yeah. drill down where you can take some of this stuff and drill down where the companies now yeah. organizations should actually be a be worried but more importantly what they can do to protect themselves yes. right yeah, yeah and prepare better prepare that's yeah, fantastic sure. I, right. I i i want to thank you dr algindi uh, my friend I, we've thank done you. many projects together over the years in in, in middle east yeah. in europe and so forth so it's uh, always a pleasure being with you my brother yeah i know exactly what you're capable of <laughs> you've done fantastic stuff uh, thank and, you very uh, much so, so I, I know you're probably falling asleep because it's very late at <laughs> night. But <laughs> no, thank you no for doing this. I really, no. truly appreciate that. And uh, thank you. I'll thank you. And thank, thank you for every, you know, everyone in, in, the, in, in the panels because I really enjoyed their talk too much during the day. So thank you again, everyone. Uh, thank you, Bashir, for organizing something very important like this. I will make sure that they are aware of your comments. That's thank you. fantastic. So thank thanks. You. Uh, let me, uh, yeah. I'll just take this part here.